Open up your legs, I'm coming in. We are back at the Shits Podcast. It's about to end the week. <laughs> well, we are either shooting the shit, what? starting some shit, or picking up where the shit left off with Kia. Baby. Wait. Hey, yo. Uh. I'm your host, Monson. It's the ride the coolest catch you heard thus far. Check, check, check it out. I'm Bubba Ball, one of the dreads you can't catch at the mall. No way, unless it's a outlet mall. mall. Hey, yo. <laughs> Special guest to the show, special re uh appearance. Reappearing guest to the show. Uh, she's a normal, she's a regular. She's a re- she's I don't regular. know about normal. I don't know about normal. She's a normal. <laughs> I don't know about she's, normal. She's a little normal. Yo, Kia. <laughs> not the car. What is normal anyway? Kia. <laughs> not the car. Not the car. Yes, Kia, Nothing not the normal. car. Nothing is normal. <laughs> Nothing is normal. Not at all. Normal is subjective. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yo, we'd like to welcome y'all to the motherfucking shits podcast. We back. We back. Hey yo, yo. Y'all, we so check it out. Before we get in before we get into anything, man, we gotta give a shout out to some people, man, that's really fucking with us. Yeah. Hard. The Chicago Clubhouse Sports Podcast. Dope individuals over there. Yo, they think they know about sports. They really don't, don't know, know shit. shit. <laughs> um Yo, we got two new sponsors, man. They reached out to us. We became ambassadors for their brand. Oh. Yo, so the first one is Georgia. Valentino, yeah. Uh, if you are looking for some nice uh, jewelry that's not necessarily expensive, mm. but it's very nice, hit them up. www. Georgia Valentino. That's G E O R G I A V A L E N T I O dot com. Get your jewelry mm. on, y'all. They got some quality shit, y'all. They got Go some nice shit. Yeah, they got yeah, some yeah. nice shit. You want to propose? Yeah. To one of them bucket boys or bucket girls? <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, also. If you enter uh, the shits podcast dot twenty five, then you will get a twenty five percent discount. Oh, mm. you want Bing. that? You, you want, want that, that. discount? Yeah. Also, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but I hope I am. Avanti Creo. Oh, that's uh, A V A N T I C R I O. Hit them up at www a v a n t i c r i o dot com. They got the latest and the newest fashion shoes, bags, caps, uh, shades. They got okay. blouses. They got pants. Uh, they don't have underwear. Mm. And because the thing is, I think nowadays people are really wearing underwear. Bob Rosses, listen. If, they, if, they, if y'all get them Bob Ross underwear, please hit your boy up, Bubba Ball. You know what I mean? On Instagram, check me out. Hey, shoot me a link on the Bob Ross underwear. I don't want the Ithacas. I will with Bobby. <laughs> Also, y'all listen to us on the Block 105 Radio, www.theblock105.com, yes. every Friday, 9 a.m. And then also, y'all hit up the website, www.theshitspodcast.com. And the contest ends this week on Wednesday. Take a picture in front of the billboard on 154th and Torrance. What? Tag us. In what? the picture at the Shits Podcast. Also add the hashtag Chicago's Dopest Podcast. Add your most interesting or hilarious caption, and then you are entered into the contest to win a cash prize. What? A cash prize. Cash. A cash prize. Wait till you see my dick. Ooh. Wait till you see my dick. Oh. Wait till you see my dick. Yeah. Anyway, all right. <laughs> That's what we got going on. So anyway, Kia. Shout out Yin Yang Twins, man. Since you are the very special guest to the podcast this week. Check in. I know you got some good stuff going on. How the week went? How the week went? How the week went? The week went amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm-mm. We had an event yesterday. Um, I work with a team of realtors. You know, I do that thing. Shout the name out. Shout the name out. Uh, TPRG, the People's Realtor Group. Sound like a gang. Mm. I'm about to throw that shit up. (laughs) We had a wonderful event. Y'all are blowing. I gotta learn how to do it in sign language. Y'all are blowing the fuck up with that TPRG. TPRG. We had an event at uh, Sip and Saver on Forty Third yesterday, and it was really, really nice. It was really nice event. Um, we had a saxophonist there. Ooh. We had a DJ. We had cocktails. We had food. Mm. It was just a vibe all the way yeah, around. Did you have gift cock. bags? An event like that? We did not have gift bags, but we had a fifty dollar raffle. Woo! Gas so we money. asked for people to put their business cards in, and um, and yeah, we 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 picked a winner. So it was Gas a nice money. event. I love it. Gas really money. nice event. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. 
Bubba Ball, what about you, man? Yer. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> my Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interject. That's a dope ass jersey, bro. Oh man. I gotta get credit on, where credit on, is come due. On, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> it was very so, nice. So look, so look, check it out, check it out, check it out. My baby's got jobs. Aw. <laughs> right. And it was beautiful to see. My son, he uh my youngest son, he enrolled in a STEM program. And That's dope. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Both of them. My daughter, she's happy she gets to go back to her, you know, um, normal summer camp she went to. She loves it. She loves the trips. Um, she loves begging for Subway for trips. <laughs> this is her thing. <laughs> Any trip, Daddy, I need Subway. You know, I'm going. I'm going bowling tomorrow. <laughs> what? I'm gonna show you my outfit. She be happy as hell. So, man, it's a beautiful thing to see the kids maturing. Um, my youngest 14, she just graduated, so she's working her first job, which is actually a learning kind of um, job where she's actually learning. It's not really a job. You know what I mean? They mm -hmm. just paying them as a Like an center. internship. Yeah, it's beautiful. Right, um, my oldest son, he's refereeing I at IHSA basketball tournaments. Ooh. So he, he got certified. He finally got his actual um, whistle. And it was, it was it's just good, man. I always wanted to be certified, and he beat me to it. So I always oh, tell him I'm proud sorry. of you. You know what I mean? Um, he took advantage of the opportunity, and, and and it's just good, man, to watch your kids just move through life, take their own path, For sure. and and embark on some shit and follow through. That's my main thing. I'm yeah. big on you know if you're gonna if this shit ain't for you, that's fine. Stop doing it. Don't continue to do it because mm -hmm. of the fuck with your energy, the fuck with your spirit. Mm -hmm. I like do that. what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Find your niche. And, and go full force with it. So it's good to see that they're, they're embarking on life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? My son, how was your week? Man, speaking of refereeing, man, uh, I went and checked out my son's uh, basketball game on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Sir Bryce? Sir Bryce. <laughs> uh, hey, Killing hey, 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 man, look. Killing the out there. The second game they played, the, the second game they played, the kids that they played, I don't necessarily think they was, <laughs> oh, uh, I don't legal. necessarily think they was prepared, uh, but I'll tell you this much. Sir Bryce took advantage of it. He was taking the ball up court. He was dribbling the motherfucking ball up court. I think his coach was on the side like, nigga, what the fuck is you doing? Yeah. But he felt like, fuck this. These niggas are some bums. They weak. <laughs> they weak. <laughs> I mean, he was shooting threes, all types of shit. Yeah. So they won two out of three games, so that was dope. Um, uh, also, man, uh, shit. The sub T, like I tell y'all again, opening. It's July 27th. Yeah. Y'all got to stop through that. Cause it's gonna be hot to death. Uh, another thing going on for me this week, we man. Yo, there. shout out to my uh, to the Whitman family, man. My uncle Elgin passed away, man. We had the funeral today, and I oh. must say it was very, very interesting. Mm. Uh, Rest I in peace, man. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, lost, like man. it was, it was definitely some different. And my uncle Elgin was one of the coolest motherfuckers I ever knew. Mm. Like. To me, like when it come to cool dudes, yeah. he was that first dude that I really looked at. Like this nigga's fly as fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, he had a name. His name was Elgin. Yeah. How, how can you not be yeah. a cool ass nigga with a name like Elgin? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be smooth with a name like Elgin. I have never seen a square yeah. ass right. Elgin. You nah, know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, nah. Nah, uh, Eugene. Nah, that's different. <laughs> Eugene is something different. I've never seen a cool ass Eugene. I'm sorry. I, I apologize to all the Eugenes out there. But, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but think about it though. It's just something that think about the names that you that you ran into that have never been cool. Have you ever ran into a person with a certain name that has never been cool? Think about that. I don't want to say it. Say it. Say it. No. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> now nah, you know I gave who I gave the Cynthia some <laughs> You went in on the Cynthia's, I bro. Went in on the but all my Cynthia friends are really nice people. So, you know, I told but them. I think I you said, called them ratchet. No, nah, they were, the Cynthia's ain't ratchet. Okay. Them fucking Keisha's. <laughs> oh, Come mess. on, man. My sister named Keisha. The, the Luz, the Tuz. And I'm a love. Stop playing with me. Lucky we, and she's a lucky Like... <laughs> Ooh, no, no hyphenates. Hyphen. Mm -mm. Capital K. No, no capital K's either. We straight through. Right, we gonna be back, man. We gonna be back. We gonna, <laughs> we gonna get off these names. We, we gonna get off these names. Yo. 
I know all my ghetto names. <laughs> Tina, Serena, Kim, Latoya, <laughs> Trina. <laughs> hey, yo, shout out to all the motherfucking artists who trying to be gangbangers and don't get plugged, yo. It's the Shits Podcast, y'all. Oh, it's the Shits. <laughs> Tune into the Shits Podcast every Friday at 9 a.m. on the Block Radio. That's www.theblock105.com. It's the Shits. I like Sam Hyman. Oh, Sam Hyman. All right, Dusty Dawn. And Dusty Dawn. We got clean pussy. (laughs) Smelly pussy. Yo. (laughs) Dirty pussy. We are back. Musty pussy. I don't know about that one. Oh, we got it all. I don't know about that. Welcome back to the Shits Podcast. We just talking about the Bernices and the Tonys and the Arthurs and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but really, let's get into something else. Let's man. get into something. Let's get into. So let's talk about the shot, man, mm. and not the city, but the show. I love. You, you watch the show, but I ain't up to date on it. But I have watched. Oh, okay. I have watched. It. Okay, it's, it's okay. It's a couple of things. And like I would say this much. When the shot first came out, mm-hmm. I wasn't really that big of a fan. I mean, we talked about this too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wasn't really that big of a fan of it because I was like. I didn't think it really represented, and we had this conversation. Yeah. I don't think it really represented Chicago accurately. Mm-hmm. It's up to the directors, so right. whatever the directors see fit, this is the their portrayal, right? Of, you know what's going and, on. Right. And I didn't think, and I, I wasn't really a huge fan of the writing. Mm-hmm. However, I will say this much: the season now, way better. Okay, way better. What and season I, is this? You talking this about season three? three. Okay, this is season I three. It's three. Yeah. And. I didn't really. I, I give them credit because I didn't know where they could have went with the with Brandon not being. In yeah, it. me too. I was you know I was wow. concerned about that. So wow. I was like, I was concerned about that. Wow. But honestly, I feel like it, it, it don't even it, matter. Should he have been Man. in it to begin with? Like, I don't feel like we missing nothing. Right. To Can be I, honest, and I was Brandy, even thinking, yeah. and I was even thinking like uh, Buddy's character, the one that uh, him and his wife got the open. Uh, oh, uh, Emmett. Emmett. Yeah. I, I kind of figured they was going to put more emphasis on Emmett. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't realize they was going to put that much emphasis on the mayor slash the region. I mean, the GD, the GD <laughs> yeah. region. Um, I guess he's the GD region. Dang. Um, but yeah, I didn't think they was going to put that much emphasis on him. But I think the show is, is, is coming along well. Mm-hmm. Now, there is something I do have an issue with. Come on with it. So, I, I, I'm a movie connoisseur. Me too. So with me being a movie connoisseur, I look at certain things and I look at certain things like horrible love scenes. <laughs> like, yes. You know what I'm going Which with this. Which one you know? I know. <laughs> oh, and I seen the last yeah. episode. <laughs> you, you know where I'm going with this. With you know where I'm going with this. In the history of cinema, movies, <laughs> TV, or whatever, there are, there are certain love scenes that have been fucking horrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That yeah. should never happen. Definitely. One of them, Danny Glover, Oprah Winfrey, and Beloved. <laughs> Mm. Should have never fucking happened. No. Never fucking God. happened. Anybody ever watched the movie Ugh. know what I'm, even Oprah know that shit shouldn't happen. Uh, <laughs> so, number two on my list is the brat and whoever old girl was. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. And that was cringy. <laughs> it was. It, it was, was cringy. Yeah. I like like dude, like I give I give the brat credit. I like the brat for body. coming out of a comfort zone and playing. And playing that role. Was it? Wait, what? what really I was, was, it? <laughs> was it? I don't know. So it probably really wasn't. Was Brad's body. I don't know if it was but out the, of her comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that probably was that it. Bar. it wasn't that far. That probably was a uh, camera phone video. Anyway, <laughs> um, but she really didn't come out of that either. You know, no. she, she really kept the, the jersey on. <laughs> Did she keep the jersey on? <laughs> this, this is fucking I don't remember. Loud, you know, all I know is it was like Ugh. I probably my face was like for real making a face right. when that was happening. Probably, right. probably. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, like sometimes, like even as a shorty, when you watch soft porn, um, <laughs> when you watch soft porn, you probably was unbuckling the belt. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm just saying. Yeah, with okay. the with the Brett. Sex scene was like you was zipping your shit back up. It was oh like, oh my god, <laughs> like, are you serious? It, it was like, ah, man, oh. man it was, maybe fast forward. Yeah, definitely. Like, <laughs> let me see what happened afterward. <laughs> it was, it was oh bad. My god. It was bad, bro. Like for real. Um, but now I will say this much: Was she talking? <laughs> they talked a little bit at the bar, she, but not at, when they went to the crib. No, no, nah, she didn't say much. No. She didn't say much. Right. T- t- that would have made t- it t- even more big, awkward. Baby. Yeah, and she kept a sweater on too. Um, <laughs> a hoodie on. It was, it was, 
She probably did have a hoodie on. And you want me to brat tat tat that ass? She kept it. No. I don't remember. Wait, she didn't have a hat on. Are you sure? She had a ponytail. She had a ponytail and a bandana. Never took it off. Yeah, I felt like at least take that off. I think she I probably might have did fast forward. I think okay, she probably kept she her Jordans said, on. All right, listen, y'all. She kept her Jordans on. If she would have said, "Hey, baby, you ready no. for me to brat tat tat that ass?" No, no. that made the move. No, <laughs> no. no she'd have been. She'd have been better saying this shit is functified. <laughs> <laughs> like straight up, it was. It was. It, it was not good, bro. Like for real. I mean, it wasn't. You, but I will say this much: the mayor's, okay. the mayor's sex scene with old girl. Okay. In front of the window? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I like that. Oh, I like that lotion. lotion. <laughs> get your lotion. Yeah, then that that one got the belt on the that one got the belt off. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So So all my fellas is locked down. Hey, do y'all listening to the show? And even and, and cause I think about it how old girl was. Old girl from Escape. Oh. Remember? Candy, yeah, she wants to watch. Yeah, that's, see, that was. Candy is a fucking freak. Yeah, that was. Candy that was, is a freak. Yeah, she's was, like, keep going. Yeah, so that was that was that was dope. Like so candy. Candy's a freak. Yeah, that was. I, like I that. thought Shorty was gonna stop. Though. I don't want to fuck. The no, fact that she did it, I was like, oh, hold on, the, the no, fact, wait a minute now. The fact, <laughs> the fact that she motioned to him like, nigga, let's keep yeah. this shit going. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was like, that was kind of sexy though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. For real. Yeah. And man, that nigga, like, he the reason. But it's her voice. She's like, I, uh, I want to keep this going. Damn. Damn. Come on. Jag off a little bit. Get your shit back up. Hey. I like to watch. Uh, I just want to watch. But y'all turning me on. Over here. I'm getting a little hot. Uh, uh. Yeah. No, mm, was... I don't be doing shit like that. No, let me stop. <laughs> Um, the other thing, man, about the show that I think is is definitely worth talking about is the whole idea of us policing ourselves. Okay. So, like, so do y'all think that's do y'all think that's feasible in our community? And just in, in saying Chicago, meaning what? Like how? Hell no. Nah. No. No. no, how do you mean, like, policing yourself in what area? So, Like us not needing the police. In any area. So, for example. No, we really don't need the police. Mm-hmm. If you, if Some you shit go down, it, I call this well, number I, instead I of calling that one. I look at it. I look at it. I look at it as. I'll take that back. Yeah. We do, sure. uh, we do need the police. <laughs> but to, the, to, the, to, prove my, to prove my first statement that we don't need them is that they really don't help when we call. It's like, it's, it's very... It's a very low percentage that they will come through and rectify the problem that you actually call them for. A lot of times when they actually are called and they actually do come, the outcome that you get is not what the fuck you intended. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I say a lot of times, you know, that is the very, 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 three varies last resort when you call them because they come and take over the situation mm-hmm. it's, it's no longer want? it's no longer in your hand that's so not you what you ha- want that's that you have to make sure that that is what you want when it you depends call on them the situation right. you see yeah. what i'm saying For like sure. if, if the situation gets so out of control where you have a family member and they're like acting up beyond your control and you call the police and the police come and do something otherwise than what you expected see you don't have an expectation when you call that authority you understand what I'm saying? Right. So that 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 has been proven, and that's the bad reputation that they have to own. Nobody has to own that but them. Right. You understand what I'm saying? But you, as a civilian, when you include them in a family matter, when you include them in a Thanksgiving dinner, when you include them in a Christmas, and they come over and kill one of your family members, you call, oh, the turk? You call them. So we all have to take some form of accountability For sure. and responsibility. And that's where sure. it's like a tricky, it's a slippery slope. If you're not a gang member, you've never been in any kind of street fight. Yeah. And you own a home and people are sitting in front of your house. You better call the fucking police. You have no other yeah. recourse. You don't have a, a cousin that's a vice lord or some shit that can come over there with five or six niggas and clear your block up if you need them to. Or so a region. You, you, you're a civilian. <laughs> 
Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're a civilian, so you have to call the police. If somebody robs you, somebody steals your lawnmower, mm. somebody breaks in front of your car, you have to call the police. I call. You the have police. no other. Shit. Yeah, right. You got Let no other recourse. Be very <laughs> known. I call them. Not for any and everything. Everybody can't be gangster. Kid, you can't be gangster. I you can't. Gang, babies, I don't try to be. Your gangster level is. I is, do not is, try to. Well, well sometimes, to be. sometimes I try to. It'll be. go up. No, my best three. friend called me gangster kid today. I she, promise she did. Wow. Just because my my mouth. Oh, mm-hmm. my mouth. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right, yo, we're going to take a break real quick. <laughs> you got hey, a dirty yo. mouth. Shout out to all the dumb motherfuckers who called the police when they had a warrant. It's the Shit oh, Podcast, y'all. Oh, shit. Uh, all erotic needs and adult needs hit up Cold Pleasures, C O L E Pleasures.com. That's www.colepleasures.com. It's the shits. You got a warrant. Come on, though. We are back at the Shit Podcast. And we are here kicking with our special guest this week, Kia, not the Kabul. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, and we're talking about our ability to police ourselves. Mm. Well, we're talking about specifically in the Chicago area, but I mean, in all in, in all our in all our communities, do we have the ability to police ourselves? Because think about it, every call is not a domestic violence call. Every mm-hmm. call is not a assault. Call some calls are just, you know, I need you to defuse some shit or go ahead. I was just gonna say to his point, I feel like you need to think about, and regardless if this is calling the police or what the situation is, what you want to happen, right? Why am I, I calling? And this is, I mean, yeah, I so the if there's no to your point, if there's no other way to do that, yeah. Mm-hmm then okay maybe you need to make that call but it the end result like what is my goal i mean i feel like people should be thinking that anyway yeah, before true. they make yeah, moves true. and shit what is my goal right. what am i trying to accomplish can i afford this because, also can yeah. i afford to kick this man out can i afford to kick this woman all out? of that to think right. about just she not that her. situation she but think it all the I've way i've heard through. the police coming to your house and seeing that y'all been together for a while or whatever and shit mm-hmm. just went bad and they gonna be like, oh, y'all gonna be together. So it almost defeats the purpose of them being there because they're not really there for you. They just like, oh, here go another domestic. Mm-hmm. Y'all love each other. Y'all going through some shit. Mm-hmm. Y'all gonna be together. Right. Woo, woo, woo. When I called them motherfuckers when my girl came there, she seen the shitty ass braid job that she did me when we broke up right before I got married, right? I was with somebody six years. Shit went bad. She tried to leave some shit there. I was like, no, take this shit with you. She saw my motherfucking hair being braided over. Man, that motherfucker wanted to come upstairs. I said, no, I got to call the police. <laughs> now, the chick who was doing my hair was younger, bad, or all that shit. So if she would have saw that young motherfucking big booty ass motherfucker. She was bringing your hair naked? It would have went. No, <laughs> but her ass was so big, she would have got intimidated. See, when the real bitches come in the room, you know what I mean? Some, some, just like when the real niggas come in the room. That's true. Everybody, everybody, you know what I mean? Like, oh, they try to... You know, so, so when the bit. police came over there, I'm like, sir, she has a computer desk bigger than dirt shit. This is my chair, and she can take this other shit. This is all she has in here. And please, she got a warrant. Please escort her downstairs snitch. with this shit. Yeah. And they was like, oh, y'all gonna be back together. Woo. I'm like, bro, help her get this shit out of here. <laughs> like, this is why I called y'all to make sure this shit gets out of here so she can't come back over here no yeah. more. Because she parking on the block like she still live here. Did you take her keys? <laughs> no. Yeah, no, the key, I switched the locks. So I was about to say, you changed the lock? She couldn't get in and out. Keep the keys. Keep yeah. the keys, bitch. Here go the locks for him. Here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I left the locks out there on the bag. Right. But yeah, it was, it was terrible. So shit can go wrong, and you don't plan it to. My thing was, okay, if you go, go, go. Don't come back and linger around and, and look for shit to spark your interest. I'm not being nosy on you. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck what you do, but that's where... You know what I mean? The thin line is in relationships and when they end. You know yeah. what I mean? They can never really end good or else they wouldn't fucking end. I disagree with that, though. No. Some some relationships can't. I had a couple end good, but they really never began as relationships. Like, it wasn't really like. The foundation right, was like a yeah, friendship. Yeah, yeah. It was like, mm-hmm. it, yeah, friends and benefits type mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. And I think those were the best because those always ended good. It was the actual fucking relationships where motherfuckers knew like it was over. Mm-hmm. Like the sex is cut off. The 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 phone conversations is yeah, no hello. Yeah, what's up? You know what I mean? Oh, all right, click. Out. You know what I mean? Who like, this? Click. New phone. Who this? No yeah. bye. No. You know what I mean? Like that that cut like to the point shit. Yeah. You know the relationship is over. 
Right. Can I help you? <laughs> Man, that hurts. That hurts. She okay. Is. Burns. That burns. All right. Well, well let me ask you. <laughs> that burns. Let go me ahead, ask. Go ahead, go let ahead. me ask this question. So if, if if we did if we if we were put in a situation where we had to police ourselves, do you think we would have the ability to hold each other accountable? Men could, I don't think women would. I knew you gonna say that. Like I knew was gonna... Wait, can you Uh-oh. expound Uh-oh. on that? You, 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 you gotta understand. It's so many women out here, right, that have fucked up the community. And I say this and I mean this wholeheartedly. No, wrong one. Wrong <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> That's the one. Go ahead. Because now we start some shit. Now, what I mean when I say that is that there's so many women have had children and, and, and felt like that they have had these children and didn't need the men that they had the children by on their own previously while already being a mother. There is nothing worse than overcomplicating your life with a lot of children. You see what I'm saying? Being a parent is hard as shit. Mm -hmm. To have two to three children by different men lets these children know something at a certain point. You see what I'm saying? Like every man comes around and these children's minds is not, he's not going to be around long. You see what I'm saying? It becomes a pattern with, with, with the children that they start looking at their mother differently. You so, got to think about this, and I'm going to let everybody speak. A pimp had a mother and a father. Most pimps didn't have a father. If they did, it was up until a certain point. Okay. Every pimp that I heard about talk about his upbringing, it was just his mother, and she did a lot of loose, lascivious shit. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So a lot of pimps love their mothers for, you know what I mean, birthing them, but a lot of times, you know what I mean, a lot of motherfucking pimps, not all. They don't respect their mother. They, they had mothers that weren't respectable. So I look at this generation and, and you ask, where's the love? How can they do what they're doing? Because they weren't raised in a loving fucking environment. So how does so so how does that have to do with women not being able to hold each other accountable compared to men? Because a woman will a, a woman will find an excuse to 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 cover or to not be accountable for how her son turned out. Oh, okay. Without having a male influence see at a certain point every woman has to understand that this boy is out of control especially if his father's not around it's only so much she's going to be able to do to corral him right and and keep him in check now once he reaches that point where he's almost graduating high school and if he starts having male or or, i mean uh female company you got a female she started having boys in her room and shit like that you've lost control once, once your children start having sex in your house, you've lost control oh, that, because they're they're in a grown up that. state of mind. You mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you, 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 the parent world is so fucking hard. You want to give your children leniency, but you don't want to be too lenient to where when they do one thing, it's over. Now it's down the hill. You oh, you ain't saying about me smoking the other day. Okay, what would you wait? But what is it the woman's fault? The reason why she has been put in the position to have to do it on her own or figure it out one and then two i would think and it's been argued that it is just as important for women and young girls to have fathers mm, as it is young boys and men talking hit some jewels um, hit some jewels that's one and then two i mean i could see i could see your your point of view in that but just from a personal perspective, I have two children. I have, um, and they don't have the same father. I had my daughter, they're five years apart. I said when my my oldest daughter was five, if I, wa- if I didn't have another one before she was five, that I wasn't having no more. Like I made that, I'm not having no more. I wasn't doing it. I That's got fair. pregnant with my youngest and man, it wasn't even, hey, I'm having she a happens. baby. Shit. She it happens. was, what am I about to do? Because mm, mm. I didn't plan this. This is not. So abortion so, wasn't a part of your, like, you You didn't even get in no second thought. Shit. <laughs> Fuck you mean? I had an appointment. <laughs> like, Ooh, and, and, yeah, wrong of wrong. course. Like, I, but saying all that to say, I I don't. Everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm so glad right. that I decided otherwise. Right. But saying all that to say too, 
Like, anybody that knows me, and I can only speak from personal experience. I can't speak for every single mom or every right. mom that has two kids or three kids. Um, anybody that knows me knows, though, that my kids, my girls, they good. Regardless of who's in their life and who's not. Yeah. They good. They they all the way good. And I believe you because you're a woman and you're raising young women. If you had a young boy Boys, in I the couldn't, mix, man, look, I couldn't. I maybe it'd you be a would different need, conversation. You would need some help in, in, in your brothers, cousins, whoever you felt that was prominent and could be a good role model for them. You would yeah. need it would be smart of you. Yeah. To to make sure that that connection is there so that they see the good balling, that they see that this is the, this is how you travel. This is how you go to the store and get your shoes. Not to you say that I mean? this is the case, but what do you do when those people are not the role models? Well, oh. that that's where your parenting skills comes in. That falls right. on you. Right. See, you as a parent have to align and associate everything that comes in and out your house. Mm -hmm. So if your children leave that house, you got to make sure that they're going somewhere with somebody that you Absolutely. trust. Absolutely. I feel good and, and safe when my children go places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's my whole goal as a parent. And when I say, no, nah, you ain't going over there, tell them to come over here. Mm -hmm. like Call a all of them mm -hmm. and tell them to come over here. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. I sit up and go to sleep and nod off mm -hmm. in the hotel room or whatever. But first thing in the morning, get y'all swimsuits. We going downstairs. Y'all in the pool. <laughs> all fucking day long. Coming up at 12, we go eat. And then you back down in there. Oh, y'all want to sleep? Okay, then wake up. We going swimming again. Mm -hmm. See, all that. Bring the bad ones, too. I want all the bad kids with me. All the challenging kids. All the challenge and all the motherfuckers that want the attention. Bring it with me. Ain't no such thing as no bad kids. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. It's no such attention. thing. Right. Yeah. It's the challenging kids. Like Bring them to me. Yeah, I mean, depending on who you talk to. Depending on who you talk to. I mean, like, I'm trying to think what's the difference, what's the definition of a bad kid? I would say a challenge. It's a badass kid. kid. It is. Okay. <laughs> all right. So you okay, so will, will we be able to hold each other accountable as a community? So the first thing I think about is this. When, yes and when, no. when I think yeah. about that is how people will say free the guys. Free the guys. Yeah. Knowing goddamn what a nigga did it. You know, <laughs> no, I'm why, why does he deserve to be free? <laughs> free my man Ray Schmurder. Free Ray Schmurder. You know what I'm saying? Like, we gotta rap. We gotta rap. We coming right back. So I mean, like, that's to me, that's one of the challenges. Free man. Ray. Free Ray. Ray. Yo, we're gonna take a break real quick. Hey yo, shout out to everybody out there who wanted their guys free. Know that man, uh, free the guys. Knowing that nigga did it. All right, man. It's the free shit's the podcast, y'all. What up, ladies and gentlemen? Milk and dream the milk and nightmare, the heartbreak kid, young Baca. And when I come to Chicago, I check in, I get on the radio with the shit's podcast. One more time, man. Give a big shout out to the Shits Podcast. Young Bach Productions, man. Hollis, we out here. We are back at the Shits Podcast. And we are here with our special guest this week, Kia. 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 Um, <laughs> Not ch 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 chia. Hey, yo. Like, I do mean like chia pack. Uh, hey, yo. <laughs> Told y'all, man, if y'all out in Calumet City, yo, 154th and Torrance, hit up yes, the billboard, sir. take a picture, put the hashtag, tag us, put something hilarious, and you are into, into the contest to win cash prize. Yo, anyway, Kia, what you about to say? Um, I feel like just as people, as individuals, male or female, mm. we, a lot of times with whatever adult is closest to us growing up whether right. it be our mother our father grandparents aunts uncles whoever is raising us we learn how to and we pick up on traits that are either like them yeah or we decide i never want to be like this person that's it oh. and end Drop up being the complete opposite of I can't tell you, I can't think of one person who is either not just like their parents in a lot of ways mm. or the complete opposite of. Like, Ooh. because you either decide that whatever, whatever lifestyle or whatever consequences you were able to observe based on how this person is mm. and, and, and the type of person that they are. Mm. You either decide that you want that for your life or mm. no, nah, I won't differ. Yeah. Mm. And you. so not never treat my kids like this. Right. Or my children. Uh, like okay. Yeah. I never treat my children. I see where you, I see where you're going with that. Yeah. So it's crazy because I think about my family. So, Ooh, <laughs> I mean, I don't think, compare. Don't compare. I mean, yeah, I probably shouldn't. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. I think that's a 
Don't compare. <laughs> yeah, I think I was gonna leave it at that. That's, that's... Let that point rest because I know all too well where you coming from. I've been around. I've had a lot of friends that chose to do certain things, but when I actually got a slight glimpse of their family and their home life, I understood Makes sense, why. Right? Yeah. It, it made, made a sense. lot of sense. And like I said, that's like, accountability. Man, their mama can't read. <laughs> that's accountability it. that I don't think a lot of women are ready to stand up and uphold. If you got five children and you never was a mother to either one of those children, and all of them would say certain things similar to you basically like neglecting them. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't be able to say, like them tears and shit would only mean something, but you wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Like you were there, but you wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Like, so, mm-hmm. you know, you got aunties, grandmothers, mm-hmm. you got a lot of people who step in and a lot of children's lives at the right time, sometimes yeah. late, yeah. but it's never too late. Thank mm-hmm. God. I thank God for everybody that does for those jobs, families. man. Yes, absolutely. Because um, that's a hard job to look at this this child and know that it's no future. It's no future coming, no good future coming out of this result right here. So if I don't step in and say, you know what, come with me for the weekend and woo, woo, woo. And can now one of my kids, my nieces or nephew ever say those words? Damn. Not without, not and in, in be truthful in it. Because mm-hmm. I, I tell people quick, I have seven kids. Like, Damn, I, they, they are mine. Like so mine how hard are. is it for you to date? Like, okay, are you dating? Like, what, what's up with the love? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! I mean, Uh-oh. I dabble. <laughs> Man, shit. Cause with seven goddamn kids, you know, I got dogs and shit, and I'd be like, you know I gotta what? walk the dog. I'd be, you know, I'm gonna be over there walking the dog. Honestly, it's, you want that it's, six piece? It's one of those things where, <laughs> especially having girls, like I mentioned piece. earlier, you gotta be cognizant of yeah, how, you you move. Around, how you move. Yeah. They watching you. For sure, they're watching. So they watching, they listening, they do on, everything. They're gonna remind you what the fuck you did four, five years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They'd be ready for that shit. And yeah. Okay. Let me ask this question. Go ahead. So with this generation, okay, do you think this generation, not that, well, the, the younger generation, the generation under us, do you think they lack ambition? Yes. You think they lack ambition? If that's synonymous with they lazy as fuck, yeah. <laughs> like, I just. I think we all had our lazy moments at some point as adolescents becoming young adults, right in, in between that, I'll say, 13 to 18 yeah. year old stage. Like, it, it took everybody their own growth spurt. I didn't become clean until I was probably like 16, 17. Mm-hmm. And then I, I got it. You know what I mean? Like, I was being, about that age. being organized it was better than just. Like dumping my clean Organizes. clothes on a bed that I'm not sleeping on. I'm, man, I got a bunk look, bed. Man, I'm on look. the top. I'm dumping my shit on the bottom. <laughs> like you know, I'm tired of my mama coming in there going the fuck off <laughs> with more clean clothes. Like you know what I mean? Like, like ah, you know. I've been washing yeah. my clothes since 15. So yeah. when I got my shit together, you know, you slowly getting your shit together, and now I got a job. I graduate high school. I got a job in work construction. I got to be gone mm-hmm. at the same time my mother. Sometime early, depending on where I'm working. That was responsibility. So when people get dogs at a certain age, my children are in college, they wanted dogs. I told them, I said, that's a fucking mouth to feed. That's a child. Yeah, that's a fucking kid. So when you get out <laughs> of class and you go work and then you come home, that dog hasn't been out all those hours. Who going to watch them? Who going to walk them? Who going to tend to them? Shit all they need the house. attention too. <laughs> like all of that. So do you think, so you said, y'all say y'all, y'all say y'all think they lack ambition. So my next question I think is it's, this. I'm sorry, real yeah. quick. In addition to lack and ambition, I think they lack direction. I think that they are just lost. So here's the hard question. Here's the hard question. Do you think you can teach ambition? It's hard because they have hard influences and weak influences. Wait, so so do you think you can teach or you think you can't? You can't teach ambition. What you can teach is other directions. You can teach, you can teach, you can teach success how and now in a, in different yep. areas to your children now how you figure that out how you're able to relate to your children that's the way that you teach it right you see what i'm saying so whether y'all able to go to the golf fucking thing and hit golf balls and they in tune with you now you able to break shit down to them you see what i'm saying or whether y'all go go car racing whatever your link is with them you see what i'm saying you work on that 
You build on that, and then you drop these jewels. And they'll get it. Yeah. Your, your, your children will get it because it's not forced then. You see what I'm saying? Right. You so, have to give them room to be open to you. You're going to always be their parent, but mm -hmm. you have to figure out ways to be the guidance counselor, mm -hmm. the, the, the fucking psychiatrist, right? right? And the, a friend. I hate when people say, I'm, I'm the parent and not your friend. friend. There's a way to be realist. both. I'm your realist There's friend. There's a way to be both. Yeah, because mm -hmm. a lot of motherfuckers don't, don't lie to them. I'm your realist friend. I don't know why I and then my kids are tell my children to tell you, bro. I'm their realest friend. A friend, but with boundaries, and you should have boundaries you in all of boundaries. your relationships. You I don't care listen. what the relationship is. There should be boundaries. I can't come to y'all crib and, and I feel do like shit. A, a parenting is. is <laughs> you feel me? I can't come. I can't come to your crib and do, I can't come over to Dur's crib and do certain shit because yeah. I'm who I am. Right. Yeah. It don't matter. Yeah. You would kick me the fuck out before you beat my ass, but I know I can't come back over there. Yeah. Right. And I gotta call you the next day. I have to. You see what I'm saying? So, so it's like, uh, Kia. Okay. So do you think you can't, or you can't teach ambition? I don't think you. I don't think you can because I think what the, the, the things that you would do that would maybe um, enhance ambition or give somebody ambition, I think is just going to teach them survival. So, for example, if I take away what. I don't know, you comfortable, right? You know no you car. get three meals a day, you I'll got a roof car. over your head, you take stuff, you just gonna learn how to adjust. Right. You gonna learn Are how you? to and I don't think that's ambitious. I think you're learning survival yeah. traits. You're yeah. you're learning how to do without shit. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. a part of survival. You're either going to adjust, it's going to make you motivate you to do this more, do better, get more money, whatever the case may be, or fuck it, I don't need this car. I'm about to um, I'm Uber about, everywhere or use my homie that exactly. Got it's just when teach about what's adjust, your definition and I don't think that's ambition. of ambition, and yeah. what are you trying to to get across to your children when you say? Well, my well, my definition of I was about to Google that shit and cheat, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my definition of ambition is your hustle, your right. drive, your your focus on a goal, and the way you you plan mm. the shit out, and the way you go about it, and the way. Once you meet that goal, you go to the next goal. You know what I'm saying? The way that you don't allow obstacles to get in your way, you allow obstacles to make you a stronger person. That's my definition of, exactly. definition of ambition. Okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. That should have been a rap, too. We'll be back, um, man. Speaking of rap, rap. rap. Uh, Dern's <laughs> telling me to wrap that shit up. Um, shout out to all the people out there that spelled ambition wrong on their <laughs> uh, on their test. And they got mad at their teacher because they corrected their dumb ass. Hey, yo, it's the Shits Podcast, y'all. It's the Shits. Yeah. The Block 105 Radio. Tune in every Friday at 9 a.m. www.theblock105.com. We are talking about ambition, baseball gloves and bats and shit that you're trying to refund and shit like that. <laughs> it's a long conversation. Uh, Resale that shit. Going off up. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. All right, so, okay. Whoa. All right, my next question is this. With this generation, just say with your kids. Do you think that when we started talking about the whole concept of ambition, mm -hmm. are we giving them are we giving them too much? Are we giving our kids too much? Yeah, they spoil. I think so. And then going back to what you said when you were talking about how you love to like watch your kids try to figure it out and mm -hmm. get in grow into their own. I I agree with you a hundred percent. But I do know people that feel like and has said, this is how these motherfuckers, well, people <laughs> in other countries and places do it. And this is how I'm raising my kids, where you don't have a choice. If I'm paying for your tuition, this is what the fuck you going to study. But what like, if they don't want to be that? So what? <laughs> then you can find a way to fund whatever it is that you feel like you want to do. Yeah. But if I'm paying for it, if I'm responsible for it, you're going to do what I say you're going to do. And that's you. get a career in this. I so I do feel like to, to to answer your question, I man, I do feel like there's moments where I'd be like, should I be thinking that for my kid? Like, I really don't know and, uh, because I want to be supportive. Right. I want to be supportive. Like, he, I, he I do. It, but at the same time, I don't want my kids to waste their time like I have. OK, and I am afraid them. of that. You have to tell I don't them. want them to get several degrees and not use one of them right. and be in six figure, you know, yeah. debt 
yeah. from getting these degrees Thank because you. and then not using them. I Thank don't you. want them to go through right. that. And it's so unnecessary. So I have made it trying to go through a you know i'm at a cross between wanting to support them fully and figuring out what they want to do and nurturing whatever it is they want to do mm -hmm. and then also telling them this is what the fuck you gonna do because mm -hmm. i'm paying for it so my cross in between that is just mm -hmm. providing a place in space until they figure it out and that won't be living with me but i'm working on securing other property for them to live in in order to figure it out because that's another thing i don't want my kids to go have to go to feel like they got to go to college in order to get away from you to get away from me to, to have a place to live in order to be successful period yeah. college is not the pathway for everybody to success it's yeah. not yeah, yeah. It's not so, and I don't want the the, I don't want them to feel like at eighteen. Okay, you gotta go and right. I feel you. I just don't. I don't want to force them into anything. Okay. With that being said, I think about this. You have people that have been in careers for for long as fuck, and then they say shit like, "What I really wanted to do was I wanted to be this, mm -hmm. but my parents told me I had to be this." Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, you want you, your kids to be that way. I want my kids to do something that they happy at, that they happy doing. I want some. Right. I want my kids to do something that makes them happy, that they're passionate about. That's what I want. That makes them some money. Right. To help. Yeah. That's, That's what I want. Result. This is what I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Why can't we get this shit earlier? What you mean? I feel like it's not nurtured enough from but parents it's not and it's not from proven. schools. In order to really nurture things like putting your kids in a whole bunch of different sports until they find the one that they like yeah. or things like, um, I don't know, different career and development programs being put in school so that kids have an opportunity for free to try different things. Yeah. They get the experience. They get the they can maybe meet and be at hospitals yeah. with doctors and be like, nah, I don't want to do this shit. Like I like getting them that experience to either figure out what it is that they want to do. A lot of times they not doing that until they in college right. and already acquired all this debt. You know what I'm saying? Lori Lightfoot, did you hear that? So, so speaking of that, I had the opportunity of going to a scared straight program in elementary school, right before Damn, I went to no. It's when you it's when you no, no, it's no, when no, you spray no, painted no, no, the GDN no, no, on no, Ogden no, Park thing. No, no, no. That's what it is. <laughs> scared straight like on TV? No. Oh. We went to a program that was sponsored by our public schools and we got to go to the county jail. Mm. Larry Hoover's sister was there. So we got to like it was a field trip. Uh, oh yeah, it was, it was a field a, it trip. Was, it was a legal field trip, bro. And we inmates got up and they they talked on microphones and shit, and they told us what we should be doing and why we shouldn't be in that place yeah. and what's going on in that place. And that shit actually, I call it scared straight because it scared me straight. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, high school, you know, we learn how to navigate. You learn how to navigate. You get your freedom, mm -hmm. right? You get to leave. You, you Sometimes your parents don't know. We had in-service every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got out of school at 1 o'clock. I remember that. I remember that. It was beautiful. I was going to everybody's school. Joe, can I get in your school? Can I get in your school, kid? Hey, Durst, can I get in your school? That's why you, you instilled in, the fear so, you know of I mean? God in your kids so that they don't even motherfucking Listen. think about you, you going where? <laughs> My Let children, me catch your ass. My out of children the understand <laughs> that I operate off the element of surprise. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, that's their <laughs> biggest fear is yeah. they never know. Yep. They never know. I'm always playing. I laugh, I joke, but I'm, yep. I, I don't play. I'll pop up and beat yep. that I don't ass. fucking play. Yep. I laugh and I joke. Yep. But I don't fucking play. Yeah. Now you that know be a shirt. we can have fun. <laughs> that should be a t-shirt. That should be a t-shirt. Hey, Pat I got a cricket machine. <laughs> if I could buy, pop up with a t-shirt that say I laugh and I, what? I say it again. Say it joke, again. But I don't play. I laugh and I joke, but I don't play. That's a saying. Pat and Pender. That's a saying from my geometry teacher, Michael McGuess. Send me out. Damn, now we got to get crazy. Some more year. Props. I laugh and I joke, but I do not play. Damn, I'm going to say he quoted it. I'm going to put his name at but the end. But that's my demo. Small. Very small. Very that's small. That's my man. That's my man, Michael McGuess. I, I went to Dunbar, checked him out, made sure he was good. This was years ago. I got to check on him again. So uh, with, with everything that's been said, it makes me think about this question. Come on with it, man. Are we afraid that our kids can't handle what we had to handle? We know they can't handle it. Shit. I know they can't. First of all, they are dealing with so much more. I couldn't hit. Wait, 
let me just say this. Okay. The stuff that they are exposed to, the the um, assets that they have, there's no, I couldn't handle it at their age. If we had that when we were their age, man, look. Nah, bullshit. I can't See, tell yeah, I think shit. it's a difference. Bullshit. It's a difference. I think shit. We, experience... we dealt with rougher shit. Yeah, I know I, I did. I in Naperville. I don't know That's what, what you. Saying, <laughs> I mean, let Yo, me hey. let me put that disclaimer wah, 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 in there. Wah. Come on, give me some wah, wah. Hold on, hold on. I don't look. Wait. I wah, can't. Wah, 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 wah. I lived in Chicago like for the past ten years, right. but I grew we up in Naperville. About that. We I forgot about I that. That's right. That's right. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, you didn't. So I I agree with Bob. I don't think my kids could because I had to experience a lot of shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like not so, the shit I had to experience. They wouldn't be able to. Yeah, I was like, I mean, like I was. Why don't they have to experience it? Because I was no. cooking, I was, I was cutting up crack at they fourteen. Because I did it. I did what they ain't. Doing. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, why have they not been? Because of I you. don't want my kids cook, cook, no, cutting no, no, up no. crack at fourteen. I know why. I know you don't want that, but I'm <laughs> saying the things that are put in place, what you you all have put in place, right. in order so that they did not have to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's so it's because of our generation. The reason why our kids don't have to right. e- have the experience that we right. had. I was yeah. on a bus. My, ki- I mean, I'm not trying to say they spoil or whatever, but my kids don't even ride the they bus. Are. They don't they even are. know what the fucking means. Like the means they don't to ride know the bus. how to ride the bus, really. And yeah. what, how do you think that's going to affect their ambition and discipline? It's very gonna. It's gonna fuck them up to the point where they're gonna learn how to drive and navigate on their own <laughs> before they ever use any alternative mm-hmm. transportations besides Ubers and Lyft. That's that's one way that they get around, mm-hmm. right? Ubers and Lyfts. And if they don't get a ride from one of their friends, then mother and father take them. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Right. But other than that, they're getting picked up from point A to point B. My kids ride public transportation, by the way. <laughs> It's okay. There's nothing wrong it's okay. with it. It's yeah, okay. but man, look, Ariana I hop on the green line real quick. Like, Mom, I'm gone. <laughs> All right, just... But... I promise you, I'll pull up our text exchange every step of the fucking way. That's yeah. On the train. Got off the train. That's something about At the mothers. red line. Y'all love every watching. step of the Y'all way. Y'all be tracking Hell ass, yeah. Like, boom, boom, Hell boom. yeah, because I, I'll be on the pull up real quick. That's dope. If I need to be. That's dope. <laughs> yo, we got to take a break real quick. Hey, yo, shout out to everybody out there who tried to hop the turns down and got arrested. Indeed. But that happened really, on the shot. Really, that was, just, that was just me. Anyway, y'all, it's the Shits Podcast. <laughs> <That's> slow <ass. laughs> You got caught. Ever Evolved is a community of content creators leading the Chicago scene to new heights. Their most recent release, League Champs Volume 1, displays the versatility within the camp and its close associates. From curating events to running two music studios to dropping articles every day on everyevolved.com. Every Evolved is constantly cooking up new things and passing knowledge on to others. Follow them on Instagram at Every Evolved and Every Evolved Studios. All first time clients get one free hour when they book studio time. If you're an artist looking to get more in the scene, hit them up for show opportunities. Every Evolved. And it's the shits. Hops. <laughs> Before the niggas over. Yeah. While I'm and drunk then, or sober. We are oh, back. I got we the aroma. At the shits uh, podcast. Don't pull me over. We've been kicking it with I got my Kia. seatbelt on. We're just going through a, a, a gamut, a gamut of topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been right. very, it's been very it's um, the shits. We shooting the shit. Shooting the shits. That's what this is. So we're gonna do something, man. We ain't did this in a while, man. Like, let's come on with it. Come on, I know what you're going. I know. You, you know where I'm going with it. All right, we're going into we're gonna do this, man. The let's three. Nope. What? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I want to know. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hey, it's the motherfucking top three of the week. All right. <laughs> we ain't did this in a minute, y'all. All right. So the top three of the week this week is. Oh, shit. The top three influential characters on a predominantly black television show. Ooh. Define influential. Somebody that left a mark on you. Mm, I got three. See? I got two right off top. I'm going to go first. Go first then. I'm Martin. Go. Martin, why? Martin exposed. The funny, hilarious family member that everybody had in either himself being a different character or yeah. 
the characters that were on the show being portrayed. You know what I mean? From Roscoe. Like, like Apollo to, and get to running. To Shanene. You know what I mean? To, to Martin. Martin's show was a very influential early 90s to mid 90s show. Yeah. Before that, we had In Living Color. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So all yeah, these yeah. characters were based off of true individuals in these people's lives that either created this character or acted this character out. You see what I'm saying? I feel you. That's what made it relatable. Ooh. That's um, what made it so I'm relatable. To go there. You know what I mean? And and, and, and that, that's where it kind of strayed away from the different worlds mm -hmm. in the Cosby me, show. Go ahead. All right, let me go my number my, my number three. Dwayne Wayne. Coolest motherfucker on Dwayne right. Wayne, and I would say that because Dwayne Wayne, because like I said, he was a cool motherfucker and he was a very intelligent Mm -hmm. Smart motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Dwayne he, was, Wayne. he was like a nerd, Dwayne. but he was the cool nerd. With the glasses, flip them bitches Man, up. Come Ooh. on, bro. The, the Dwayne Wayne, Wayne was the coolest nerd. He may he may be in smart cool. Yep. So he wasn't a nerd, and his roommate was more of a nerd than him. Uh kind of what was his name? Roger. Who? Ron, 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 Ron. Yeah, Ron. Ron. Buddy with the glasses. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Ron. Ron was more of a nerd than Dwayne. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you I know, definitely would have picked Dwayne. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> the number three. The number three. Ron, sure. Ron really brought out that insecurity aspect in the college roommate kind of light yeah. skin, dark skin. See, that was there. Also, I looked at that later on, but I didn't see it then, mm -hmm. right? But I look at it now, and I'm like, damn, that's Ron was like a lot of. He was uptight a lot. Yeah, you know what I mean, I mean? He wasn't how you getting the girls? What Whitley see in you? You know, he used to say shit like that. Yeah. Like, Ron used to make some vicious outbursts. And I used to be like, whoa. This nigga's like Stephen A. Smith. Damn. He's living with Stephen A. <laughs> he is on you. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little controversial. It's, Come on it's with Cosby. You. Cause I I don't you said Bill I, Cosby yeah for sure because you don't know care you remind what, me of you know I don't you care me what of. he's going through right now can't nobody Fuck nobody especially black person tell me that they did not learn one thing from watching up the Cosby top, Show up top. if you say that you a motherfucking lie I agree like it's just You're period right. it had so many life lessons so yeah. many things to learn so many things to grow from on that show it's fucked up you know it is what it is right man, now fat albert i i but that's a good man one. he i learned a lot from him i learned a lot from a lot of different characters though i mean fucking Hold um on. that's just number three go ahead bub your number two did we say male or it don't, matter. Okay. it don't matter it don't matter bub your number two okay my number two i'm gonna go with um i mentioned before i'm gonna say limited color Living Color. Living which, Color. Which character? So many characters. A lot of black characters. You got to name one. Um, I'll go with one of my favorites, which was Homie the Clown. Um, <laughs> Homie the Clown. <laughs> Homie the Clown was that. a direct um, reflection of that big brother, that uncle that didn't play no shit, that didn't take no shit, you wasn't slipping in under his motherfucking nose. Some of those hardcore military dads was like yeah. Homie the Clown. You know what I mean? Homie the Clown was very relatable to me because I had a couple hard nosed um, friends that had parents like Homie the Clown. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I very much attached to that role and I saw how, you know, somebody can come home from jail and take any kind of job just not to go back to jail. Yeah, you I see what you. I'm saying? So. I, feel I, I related to that role. I didn't myself, but I understood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How that role was was relatable to the community. And at the time, like, people was doing all kind of jobs. There's so many women out here that's very, you know what I mean? They school bus drivers. They mean as fuck. Yeah. But they doing this job because it's easy. It's making money. It's paying the bills. You see what I'm saying? So the versatility in the human being to right. do something that you don't want to do, but you, right. it's going to get you some money. My number, my number two is uh, Omar from The Wire. Oh my God! You and the reason why I say Omar is because Oof. Omar showed that character. I mean, I don't know if it's just because dude was a very is a very talented actor, but it it showed you how a motherfucker can still be a certified street motherfucker, but have morals and codes, and still not necessarily be with the with the traditional idea of what a heterosexual 
man is. Question you see what I'm saying? And you didn't question the nigga. Go ahead, though. Hell no. What, what <laughs> Nobody <did>, wants <laughs> that smoke. <laughs> what did you, what did, how do you think Omar rule by? Respect or fear? Uh, I say respect. Fear. I say respect. I say, I say fear. I, I say, say respect. combination. You know why? You know why? Because when Omar walked down any alley or street, motherfuckers saw him. They was like, "Omar coming! Omar coming!" And they ran. They feared Omar. They definitely res- did, but, but I he, feel like they respected him. They too. respected him. It's so thing. it's fear of formal one, respect. Because one, nobody else doing that shit. It's fear of formal respect. He was a stick up boy. He fear. went to the store with pajamas on and the fucking three fifty seven. This in his is pajamas. this is this is how I explain and it too. House shoes to get cornflakes. This yeah. is how I explain it too. New Pope. It'll respect like respect is a motherfucker would do what you ask him to do as long as you ask him. Fear is a motherfucker would do what you ask him to do until they can get your ass up out of there. You see that what I'm was saying? Omar. I don't know. I, I feel like it was Bro, respect. Bro, Omar your, used to say, knock, knock, knock. Now don't have I def- that was puff. definitely Omar, but I feel like I don't think that those two have to be separate from each other. I think you could... Respect and fear somebody at the same time. Omar was a sticker man. Y'all misconstruing he who definitely Omar, was. what Omar title was. Yeah. Omar say I rip and run. Omar was able to work with the police and still have street credibility to the point where respect. he could walk around. That was fear. Motherfuckers fear Omar because they knew he was strapped. The police knew he was strapped, but he wouldn't walk around unless he needed to be walking around. See, Omar knew how to he knew how to move. Right. That's one thing you gotta respect about Omar. Number, you look on. at the wire. Key Omar in. knew how to move. Your number two. Um, Your last two. I, again, this is no particular order. Claire. She she's yes. the one, Claire Huxtable. She showed what it was like to be a professional woman, to still <laughs> take care of and raise a family, like and kids, like how to balance that shit. And what nobody fucking with. This is the old, you know. Yeah. And and so yeah, she'll tell a motherfucker off and real quick check them, put them in a place, including her husband. So I yeah, Claire Claire was that business. That's a good one. All right, my number one, my number one is Mike Epps in the Upshaw show. Um, really, the most relatable that. show right now, up to date. I haven't seen that. Um, you got to check it out. It's, it's very funny. It's surprisingly. I seen it. Funny. I seen it. I was about to say I'm nervous. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna hold. You. I'm really nervous about watching Tootie. it because I was like, Tootie from the Facts of Life was funny as mm-hmm. hell. Um, my girl, um, the other comedian, Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes was she funny as fuck. Mike Epps was funny as hell as a daddy. Um, great show. It up, is. Up it to is. date, 2021, 2020. Okay. Very relevant. I'm going to check it. All check right. It. My number one, you said yours is very relevant. Mine is the total opposite because I'm going way <laughs> back to, I don't know when this shit was filmed, but I'm going to go with Mrs. Thomas, Roger Thomas' mama. Roger Thomas. Roger Thomas' mama. She was the oh, original we black gotta mama. Go back yeah, yeah, on what's yeah, happening. On what's happening. Break it down. On what's happening. Break Girls, you know down. what I'm talking about. I got you. I the, got you. I got Mrs. You Thomas was the original black mama. I got you. Now. And she was the original single black Wait, mama. I got you. You know what I'm saying? By so, choice. That's my number. You don't know, know it's by choice. By choice. No, no, no. Go, 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 go this way. No, no. He did his number one. It's on you. Your number one. Um. Well, shit, if we going back, I guess, uh, Florida. Florida Evans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, survival. She like a Evans, bad as a motherfucker. Like a she, motherfucker. man, mm. she, she knew how to get, get the job. She knew the assignment now, and she got escape, it done. Yeah. Before we escape, I'm going to say my <laughs> old school crush, Walona. Of course, who you who you and everybody else? No, well, Lona still looks good right now. Like six, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I mean, like she, Patty Labelle still looks good, aging gracefully, aging gracefully. Shout out to all the queens aging gracefully. All right, good. Yo, that was (laughs) (laughs) the three for three. It's the motherfucking top <laughs> three of the week. That was the top three of the week. Yo, we're gonna take a break real quick. Real quick. Yo, we're gonna take a break. 
<laughs> We're gonna take a break real quick And we coming yeah. back And my man Bubba Ball Gonna hit y'all with Underlay for the overplay Hey yo Shout out to everybody out there Who had the Flow Model TV And y'all used to sit y'all yeah. food And uh, pictures uh, on top of it TV It's the Shits Podcast the y'all. TV. It's, shit. <laughs> it's comedian Marnie P Checking in from the Shits Podcast We are back we are back, 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 Yo, we've been here kicking it with Kia. We talk about a lot of shit, man. Like, we know a lot of shit. I mean, and we talk about even more during the break. But that's the stuff we can't really talk about. Anyway, um, like broken fangs on lighters and shit like that. And anyway, uh, cable, illegal cable. Anyway. We're about to turn it over. I'm about to turn it over to my man, Bubba Ball, who about to hit y'all with the underlay for the overplay. So, coming in, coming in, coming in, hot off the motherfucking press. Not to glorify, not to exemplify, not to congratulate or hate. Always to enlighten. I was privy to um, become witness to some news that we all heard about. Little Dirt and his girlfriend, India Cox, forced into a shootout, into a home invasion. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is, is very simple. Um, success. Whichever way you claim it, whichever way you get it. With the background that you choose to come from, choose to uphold and choose to claim, are you ready for your peace to be disturbed by violence? Hell no. Repeat that. In your home, are you ready for that to be disturbed? While you're out with your family, are you ready for that to be disturbed? The lifestyle that you proclaim that you live can affect the lifestyle that you actually live, right? So we have to look at everyday life and the, and, and the walks, the ways that we travel, the ways that we move in these streets and say, if this comes to our door, are we ready for it? I don't think that the examples that are being laid forth, these are clear examples of what you get when you say and do certain things, right? I don't think these examples are being taken seriously. I don't think people are understanding and taking heed to saying that, oh, this is really what happens. Still, in 2021. Now, I... Don't know about Atlanta that much. I don't know if home invasions are the thing I heard it used to be, but certain people you would think would, you know, not have to worry about that kind of shit, but I guess not. So my point of saying that is saying this. The way that you live your life has consequences and repercussions. Are you going to be accountable or the way that you live your life and the people that you bring into the bullshit because you're involved in something. You bring your children, you bring whoever that lives with you and, and, and sleeps with you in the household with you, you, you involve them in your bullshit. So are you ready for the repercussions of your actions in these streets? Now, I want to say you know what i mean i'm glad the dirt made it out of that situation i'm glad his girl made it out i'm glad their kids or whoever that was in that household wasn't hurt but it's always to say that listen the streets is watching you know what i mean no matter what you do the streets is watching if you out here talking this and that the streets is watching and that goes for any and everybody the streets are watching so you know always move right Never put your children, try not to put your children in dangerous situations. And uh, man, just just respect life, man. You only live, you live every day, but you only die once. So remember that. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the streets is watching. Shout out to my man Bubba Ball for doing that, man. Streets Speaking of the streets watching, man, the streets is watching y'all, and the streets is watching y'all have the opportunity to go over to this billboard on 134th in Torrance and take your picture, tag yourself, tag the shit's podcast, put the hashtag Chicago's Dopest Podcast, put an interesting caption or hilarious caption, and be entered in this in this uh, in this contest to win cash. Yo, shout out to Kia for kicking with shooting the shit with us. Kia, tell them what you got going on. Tell them where they can find you at. Cause you gonna tell them about the new job? No. Oh, okay. I can't tell them about the uh, job. You ain't got no Thank job. you for putting it out there. I mean, I cooking mean, mashed potatoes ain't a new, new job, but I mean, I mean, if that's your hobby, you know, go Kia ahead. is a new bucket boy on 87th and uh, Stony Island. Go ahead. Yeah, Y'all so better give jobs. me some dollars too. I ain't playing. Um. What I got going on? Uh, what them jerk mashed potatoes is fat. <laughs> what jerk mashed? No, seriously, where can I get some? That um, sounds fat. Know. Where? So it's a place that <laughs> sell though. I don't fucking know. No, um. I need to find out. <laughs> we'll talk later. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> well, we'll talk later. Um, what I got going on? Um, uh, I got some, you know, some some good things going on. Okay. Um, some uh, positive group. things. We your R&B group. <laughs> I'm actually, oh, I want to, and they did not pay me to do this. Let okay. me just throw this out okay. here. Okay, uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's a place in Pilsen called the Color Factory. Okay. And they have classes right now for eleven fifty, like per class. Their fifty dollar classes are eleven eleven dollars and fifty cents right now. Okay. They what? supply all the materials and they have so many different classes. I mean, painting. Um, pottery, all those different types yeah. of classes. It's called the the Color Factory. I've been there a couple times before. Okay. My girl and I, we want tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, so every Saturday night they have a, a male nude wow. painting. Oh, That's just Saturday God. nights. That's just Saturday nights. They have like, <laughs> lost me with that. Look at her. She Eleven dollars like, and fifty cent. I'm painting dicks, bitch. <laughs> Look, I told them, I was like, I don't know where I'm going to hang this, so I might just leave this here. But, um, <laughs> hang no, it in the it cockpit. Should, they have yeah. so many other other classes and things available okay, only okay. for $11.50. So Under $12. Check them out. Under $12, and they supply all the materials. It's a good time. A lot of paint and sips, all that. So um, they got something every day. Do you have to bring your own liquor? Do you have to bring your own liquor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. BYOB. Sure. Okay. For sure, for sure. Okay, let me ask this question. Now, drop the address. Can you drop that info one more time? I'm going to look it up. For all the ladies of the... I, I, I mean, they can hit up the website and answer the question. Would it be easier for you to paint the baby dick or the... <laughs> Just at this point, turn around. I'll just get the back side. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, y'all, listen. Hey, like I said, yo, uh, y'all can hit up the website, theshitspodcast.com. We on Instagram. We on Twitter. We on Facebook. Got yeah. the address real quick. 917 West 18th Street. Um, And you could Google. I'm telling you, they... um. I'm about to I'm about to give you the promo code. I'm about to give you the plug uh, we right did. now. So we didn't we didn't dish out so many promo oh, codes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm about to give you the this plug the right now. It's the plug. It's the shit, it's man. The shit, For eleven dollars. You want to paint the baby dick? No, they have so many <laughs> other. They have a terrarium workshop. I about to say terrarium. Uh, uh, the succulent terrariums, you know, the little the little baby plants. Yeah. Oh, that was <laughs> Does like, that make sense now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, so the promo code right now is Starry Night with two R's. That's S T A R R Y N A N I G H T. It's it's the Remy. Y'all get it. Starry Nights with two R's. I said it. Okay, y'all got it. So if y'all want to go paint and hang out with your peoples and have fun, y'all hit that up. If y'all want to check out the website, if y'all want to check out the um the the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, hit up the website. Y'all want to check out the actual video on YouTube, check out the website. We also been dropping some dope-ass videos from some local artists and some dope-ass music on the website. Um, like I said, hit up Sub T, July 27th. Yo. Also, we will be in Atlanta next week taping a live a live you hear it. a live episode of the Shits Podcast. So shout out to ATL. Shout out to my Nigga, man T Money. Shout out. Spotify. Shout out to my man. Shout out to my man Bob. Bob a lot. Bob a lot. You know what Check I'm saying? Out Bob and Edge order pizzas. Y'all get y'all pizza. The, out the there. best pizza. The, <laughs> the best, best pizza in the land. land. God damn it. Yo, 
We'd like to thank y'all for hanging out with us, man. Shout out to my man Decker Durs, aka Gorilla Glue, Glue, for keeping all this shit going. Yes. Shout out to my man Bubba Ball for everything Yo. he brings to the to the motherfucking podcast. Shout out to Chicago. And shout out to my fucking Calumet City, because that's where the billboard is at, goddammit. You know and it. And it's the Shiz Podcast. We'll holler at y'all next week, man. It's the Shiz.